hey everybody, look what we got. I want to thank Z-Banks for sending over this longer LK5 Pro printer. When they contacted me and asked me if I wanted it, I said, heck yeah, I want it. And the reason is, it makes big prints. And big prints means all kinds of new projects for the channel. Now, I am contractually obligated to discuss the features and benefits of this fine machine. <laughs> Problem is, I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm not a tool guy. I don't really care about machines and tools. I care about what you can do with the machine. Now, I've only had this machine running and making prints for a little over a week, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It was a struggle. There are things about the machine that I already really like and I think are great, and then there's some things about the machine that I think Longo needs to fix, quite frankly, to really maximize the potential of a machine like this. Benefit number one, you can find it all over the web anywhere for under $300. This is a lot of machine for under $300. One of my favorite features of the machine is this touch screen. It's housed in a really sturdy metal container, feels very premium. Of all the printers that I have, this is my favorite touch screen. Big, beautiful color touch screen, easy to get around, easy to navigate. It's just, uh, it just feels premium. Every printer should have a touch screen <laughs> as good as this one. It's the best thing about this printer. I've noticed that printer manufacturers love to brag about their silent stepper motors, and it's true, stepper motors can be really annoying if they're not silent. But then they saddle us with these obnoxious, noisy fans. One of my favorite things about this machine was look at the size of this build bed. This thing is huge. It's got a nice big build bed, but it also has a fatal flaw, and that is that you cannot level this bed. It can't be done. I spent a tremendous amount of time. I did the paper leveling trick, twirling the knobs. I even broke out my shims, and, and you could get all four corners nice and leveled, but then the middle was completely off. Or you could level the middle and then a couple of the corners were off. There was no way and I spent a lot of time and I went through a lot of agony trying to level the bed. And then after watching a lot of YouTube videos and from my own experience I realized the bed's warped. It seems like it's flat. It's not flat. And there's no way you can level it to make it flat. So what that does is it severely limits your use of the whole bed. What this machine requires it's, it's not optional. It requires automatic bed leveling. It needs to sense where the bed is and then adjust to it automatically. I was really looking forward to using this whole bed to make flat like kit parts, all kinds of stuff where the pieces are flat and built flat low to the ground. This was just the raft and the bottom layers of a print and then I would abort the print because I mean look at that mess. It's just a mess. It, and the weirdest thing was this, it laid down an absolutely perfect first layer. And then with each subsequent layer, it got worse and worse and worse. Generally, it just looked like this. I mean, can you guys see that? Look at that. If you wanna make thin, flat parts, what is that? And if any of you guys know what causes this problem, uh, let me know because I have no idea. But I sent these photographs of these into Z-Banks and their advice was, well, you're trying to print flat parts, make tall parts. So I said, all right, I'll make a small part to start with. But look at that. First of all, the bottom layer is, is nice. It's perfect. But then for about four millimeters, a little less than a quarter of an inch, you get layer after layer after layer of what can only be described as it's, it's not stratification, it's more like snotification. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, it starts to, it, it behaves itself. And it starts to just make nice, clean prints. What's up with that? All you brilliant, experienced 3D printers, let me know if you know the simple reason and why that happens. Because this phenomenon is happening on every print that I'm making with this machine. And it's the only 3D printer that I have that's doing that. And here you can see it's not just doing it on one print, it's doing it on every print. It's just laying down these boogers for a quarter of an inch or so, and then it settles in and makes pretty nice prints. The other weird thing that it's doing is it's making, see those vertical stripes? They're very regular, they're exactly evenly spaced. You guys have any idea what's, doing, what's causing that weird thing? I mean, that's just odd. Another thing that I'd really love to see on this printer 
would be like a volcano style hot end, a hot end that I could put in bigger nozzles because on parts this big, they don't have to be printed with a, with a 0.4 nozzle. It, it almost makes no sense. Uh, I, would, I would print these parts at maybe a 0.6 or even a 0.8 or bigger and, and it'd be nice to be able to swap out the nozzle and be able to make big prints faster with thicker walls. So I would like to see a direct drive volcano style extruder. Uh, I would like to see two Z screws on the back. I'd like to see automatic bed leveling. If you had all those things, you would have a machine that would be a real workhorse. As it is for $300, this machine will make decent parts. I'm pretty sure that all the flaws in those prints that you saw are just operator inexperience. And then I'll be able to dial my settings and do all the tweaking and necessary stuff inside of Cura to get better quality prints than that. But in the equation of time and money, yes, it's an inexpensive machine, but how expensive is your time? Figure out what you make at your job and then figure out how many hours it's gonna take you to get a machine like this thing dialed in and perfect. I would argue that a machine that costs seven or $800 or even more that had everything you need to print out of the box, really nice, really big prints, is actually cheaper than a machine that you have to spend a lot of your time and effort tweaking and adjusting and finally realizing there's no way that you're going to get the maximum benefit from the machine just because it's got fatal flaws like a warped bed. Yes, it's an exciting machine. Yes, it's an inexpensive machine and it will give you serviceable parts. But the downside of it is the time and the energy and the work that you have to put in to coax those parts out of the machine has to be considered in the equation before you purchase one. Now, are you a tinkerer? Are you someone who just says, oh, I'd love to get my hands on this. I can get into it for not very much money. And over time, I can add to it and modify it and keep working with it and coax really sweet, really big prints out of it. That might be you, in which case this machine is absolutely perfect. For someone like me who wants to doesn't care about the machine at all and only wants to make nice prints immediately uh, this machine has been both exciting but also quite honestly somewhat frustrating um, sorry for these blog style videos that we've been doing in the last couple weeks but we have machines coming into the shop i'm obligated to honestly review them and um, i'm really excited to see what we can do with them in the coming projects thanks for watching I will see you next week. Hey, you guys, stick around for a minute. Because I made you sit through a machine review video, I thought we could have a little fun now. I made these sketches of designs for clothespin toys, and I really like the simple mechanism of the hinge and the big jaws. I love drawing in Procreate, and I especially love the fact that it records everything you do so you can play back all the steps that you went through when you made the artwork. Anyway, just for fun, I never did get around to making these things, and uh, one day I will, and they may yet show up on the channel. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.